Nope, that's not the screen I want. There we go. Yo, what's crack a lacking? It's your boy, Broshmo. Just in case you did not know so, we're back here tonight. Now that free agency's fleshed itself out a little bit more, we're going to give some grades. Of course, we don't have them letter grades. We got more nuanced of a grading system. Do have your F, poor use of funds. Do have your A, money well spent. And we'll go over each one uh, as we get to it. But hopefully you're having a great Thursday. Friday is tomorrow. Hopefully you have a great weekend. Uh, bro, Schmo's busy, busy, busy. I'm going to work on a mock draft for y'all. Uh, probably will come out either Friday night or Saturday morning. A little post-free agency mock draft. We'll see how that goes. Let's let's look at who we got all in the chat. As we got Mr. Hunky Dory. That's a sick name. The Spock. Got Kirito up in here. How you doing, buddy? Luke. I'm going to call you Shaq. Just gonna call you Shaq. What up, Daniel? How you doing? What's good, Andre? Let's go ahead. Let's get this sucker freaking started. As we're gonna start from the back, the NFC West. We're gonna start with the Seattle Seahawks as they kind of made a big move today as they traded for Sam Howe. And Shefty's reporting that. The Seahawks liked them, Sam Howe, and they expect Sam Howe to come in and compete with Geno for that starting job. So that's that's a little juicy tidbit there. Little juicy tidbit. I, th I honestly, when we get to Washington, dude, I think Washington's had a really good last couple of days. Uh, but that's not that's neither here nor there. We'll talk about Washington when we get there. Uh, the added Farrell Brown, Noah Fant, uh, George. George Fant, honestly, that, that's a good pickup. Come in there and can honestly just play right tackle if Abraham Lucas ain't ready to go. Or, I mean, he could literally play either tackle spot because, I mean, they, <laughs> they were so beat up, so hurt last season. But, obviously, the big move was to re-sign Leonard Williams. That was their sole focus. They got it done three years, $64 million. Gotta love it. 64 and a half. They did finally sign a linebacker. Got uh, Tyrell Dodson, which honestly, low key, that's kind of nice. Well, let me see. I think the specifics of the deal might be out. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. I don't see specifics for the deal yet. Um, Refreshing to see if we got specifics. I don't see specifics. If you got specifics on that deal, let me know. But that's cool. That's one linebacker down. They need to get at least another one in there. So we'll see. We'll see. They bring in Rashawn Jenkins, which uh, I'm kind of curious, man. If the if he's going to come in and be a starter, are they going to have him compete with Kobe, uh, Kobe Bryant for that other safety spot? Because you remember they moved Kobe Bryant to safety. Uh, I think, was it yeah, last season? I don't know, something like that. But... Regardless, the Seahawks, we already knew they were coming in on a little fixed budget. So uh, let's see where I'm going to put them Seahawks. So, uh, I mean, I feel like little cap move or little cap good moves. I mean, a lot of their stuff was re-signing their guys. Really, they got Sam Howell via trade. Uh, Dotson's a Good pickup, Nick Harris. We'll see. Then come in there and compete for that starting center spot with uh, Alusagun Uluwata Timmy. George Fant moves really good. I mean, they didn't, it, really, they did just kind of focus on retaining some of their guys, but I don't know. I'm going to keep them here for now. I'm going to keep them here for now. I don't have a real strong opinion for the Seahawks. Let's move to the San Francisco 49ers. As uh, Leonard Floyd was kind of their big haul, uh, bringing him in, letting Chase Young, who's still a free agent, by the way, until I hear otherwise. But uh, Leonard Floyd's a good pickup. I really don't like the Gross Matos pick. Like, uh, even if you see him as a rotation, like $9 million a year for him is just blah, blah, blah. I don't like it one bit. Uh, after releasing Eric Armstead, they, go, uh, they first they bring back Kevin Givens. 
They signed Jordan Elliott, cause, who I still have hope for, man. I was a big Jordan Elliott fan when he was coming out of Missouri. I still got hope. I still got hope. But then a move, they trade for Malia Collins, and all they needed to give up was a seventh rounder. Low key. That's a really good pickup. That is a really good pickup on the interior. I like that one quite a bit. I didn't think the Texans were going to move Collins. I mean, contract. Like, with his contract, it made sense. But, like, he, he's just been really good for them. Like, solid. So, it's not bad. I mean, honestly, for what they were working with, given their cap space, kind of working on a fixed budget here, honestly, not that bad of a job. So, I think I'm going to key. I'm going to go little ca little cap good moves. I mean, I really just don't like the Yutir Gross Matos trade. Gross Matos, however he wants to say his name. All right, we got the Rams. They haven't really done anything recently. Uh, what was it, yesterday? I think it was yesterday where they signed Darius Williams, which I thought that was a great move. Come back, comes back to a scheme he's very familiar with. A guy that's been a very productive player at corner for them. Obviously, I like Jonah, the Jonah Jackson pickup. This moves Steve Avila to center. I think Kobe Parkinson is going to be low key, really good for him. So I'm, we're going to go ahead. We're going to. I'm going to put a money well spent. It's kind of fringe between good moves and like overall good moves and money well spent. We're, we're going to put them there for now. We're going to put them there for now. And then we're going to go to the Arizona Cardinals, you know, straight up. I have hated almost everything the Cardinals have done in free agency. The Desmond, I don't get people on Twitter, X, whatever the heck you want to call it. I don't get people trying to talk themselves into the Desmond Ritter trade being good. I don't get it. Desmond Ritter was not a good quarterback last season. Fact. All these teams are going out and getting decent backups, and you trade away Rondale Moore, who you finally started getting creative with a little bit last season, and you trade him away for, quite honestly, a subpar backup. Like, Ritter is still a project. He was still wildly inaccurate last year. You didn't get a backup. You did not get a backup quarterback. You got a project quarterback. Uh, DJ Dallas, solid pickup, good depth there for the running backs. Uh, honestly, low key, this Chris Moore pickup could could end up being pretty solid, but that means he would have to kind of like overtake Greg or uh, yeah, Greg Dortch, right? The Dortch. But because uh, I mean, th those are two slot only players, so I don't think he's gonna do that. But it's 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 a solid player to have in your receiving room. Uh, they re-signed a couple of their guys. Honestly, the Jonah Williams contract, it's not terrible. You're getting him to play right tackle. You're moving Paris Johnson over to left. Like, Williams is actually a pretty solid player when he's not having to face, like, TJ Watt, Miles Garrett. Luckily, you know, the AFC West isn't really filled with these pass rushing studs. He's going to have to worry about what, Boye Mafe? I think he could handle that. He's going he's gonna to have to worry about Byron Young. I, I'm okay with that. Nick Bosa, that's going to that's gonna suck. That's going to be, that is going to be a pretty bad time for Mr. Jonah Williams. Uh, I've kind of already vented about the Justin Jones, Bilal Nichols. People trying to convince me just because they can't, that they have been starters means it's a good move. You don't, I mean, all right, Justin Jones for the Bears was almost, he was basically pulled off of run defending downs because he wasn't good defending the run this year. He wasn't good the year before, prior. Law Nichols, in the second half of the season, start, like was losing snaps. He was a deep rate rotation player at that point to Adam Butler, who was having a good year, and Jerry freaking Tillery. Miss me. With that, these two guys were worth fifty million, and it's like, well, we got starters on our interior, not not good ones. Miss me with that. 
Uh, I really think the Mac Wilson pickup is probably just a depth move. Hopefully, like if you could get him on the field for over 400 snaps, that's going to be nice. He hasn't done that since his rookie year, but he showed some flashes last season. Sean Murphy Bunner was easily their best pickup. I don't know why I spent so long talking about the Cardinals. Uh, I guess I'm. You get real hot about moves you really dislike, and I don't want to. I don't want to put the Gar- Cardinals on blast. They're my home state team. They're not my team, but they're my home state team. I want them to do well. I want them to do well. But I think they, uh, honestly, outside of Sean Murphy Button and Jonah Williams, I think their free agent period the last few days has just been ir- irrelevant. I still see a team that's not going to do well. Hopefully, they have a lot of picks. Maybe they, they, have, they end up having a banger draft. Maybe they have a banger draft. Before we get to, I think it's the AFC uh, or NFC South, let me run through the chat real quick. <laughs> Breaking news, Bro Schmo is the new Cowboys owner. Yeah. Wish I had money like that. Wish I had money like that. What do you think about Sam Howe being traded before Justin Fields? Feels like, and I, this is something Brett Coleman brought up on his stream just a couple of days ago with uh, EJ Snyder, was they're probably going to now just hold on to fields until training cap and maybe even to the season. They're just going to wait for injuries to hit some of these teams at quarterback and see if they could get a lucrative deal. I mean, that might be it, man. That might be it. Oh, man. What up, Dylan? How you doing? Let's go ahead and move to the, the NFC South. As we got uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, largely they were just retaining their players. Got a deal done with Baker. Got a deal done with Mike Evans through the franchise tag on Antoine Winfield. Honestly, probably could have called it a day there. They re-signed Levante David. Probably could have called it a day there, and that would have been a okay. The only actual addition they made was Jordan Whitehead, who used to play for him. Essentially, it feels like they were just re-signing their guys or guys that played for them like a year or two ago. Uh, I'm a Dolphins fan, Joey. I'm a Dolphins fan. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in this. Re-signed their guys tier. Essentially, that's just guys, teams that have focused keeping some of their guys in-house. I don't think it's fair to give them a free agent grade. No, I really don't. All right. Keep the sucker moving with the New Orleans Saints. Honestly, man, this team, they spent more, they spend more time trying to get under the under the cap than anything else, but they end up signing Cedric Wilson. That's great. Their wide receiver core. Outside of like what they have, AT Perry, Chris Olave, and Rashid Shahid. So they need more depth. Wilson's a depth guy. Good move. Willie Gay, I'm kind of intrigued. I know it's just a one-year deal, but Willie Gay was really good for the Chiefs last year. He's got sideline-to-sideline ability. Honestly, for the position they were in, not bad moves. Not bad moves. So I feel like, I I mean, I could put them in little cap good moves. Those are good moves, but I mean, largely they're a team that don't make too much noise in free agency. We'll see if they maybe can bring in like a Trent Brown. some Get some help at left tackle. I think that might be in the cards. Maybe watch out. See what happens there. So I'm going to keep them in, in this Jerry Jones's yacht category. Essentially, it's teams that are you're like waiting to do something in free agency. But I mean, for the Saints, it's like more so just focusing on getting under that cap. So largely, I guess it's a category for teams that are relatively inactive during the free agency period. Uh, What contracts do the Saints have that are freaking them over this much? Uh, Alvin Kamara? Bad contract. Don't pay running backs. I didn't say it. All right, we got uh, Carolina Panthers, man. They've really cleaned up. I get it. You're kind of a crap hole franchise right now. So you have a you have to pay a little bit extra to, to bring some guys in. It's what they did with Robert Hunt. That's what they did with Damian Lewis. They were like, hey, what happened on the interior of our offensive line? 
can't happen again. To be fair, that really stretched out to like Taylor Moton had his worst year ever. His worst year ever. He is a good tackle. But when you're the rest of the offensive line is just crappity crap, 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 that crap spreads like it's the freaking coronavirus, apparently. <sighs> but they, they were like, hey, we're going to go get that protection. Robert Hunt's a good pickup. Damian Lewis is a good pickup. I think their offensive line is significantly better. Question is, who will play center? I imagine Austin Corbett moves there because they did release uh, Bozeman. The Deontay Johnson trade, masterful. I don't want to say fleece because Dante Jackson's a decent player. But Deontay Johnson, golly, that was, that was a trade. And all you did was really turn a sixth rounder into a seventh. That's what I'm talking about. Maybe a little bit of an overpay on Ashawn Robinson, but again, you're kind of in a crap hole right now. You're going to have to pay extra for a little, for some of these guys. DJ Warnham is a good pickup. I don't know if he's really anything more than like an edge three, like a rotation guy. But you need to bring in guys. Glad you brought him in. Josie Jewell is a great pickup. Mark my words. He is going to be worth that 22.75 mil. Dante is a dog. I'm talking about Dante Johnson. Dante Johnson is kind of, he's I, he's I. Dante Jackson, excuse me. Man, so similar in names. Deontay Johnson's awesome. I was going to bat for Deontay Johnson on X freaking yesterday. So I was like, oh, Deontay drops it. And I'm like, dude, I had a 3% drop rate last year. Only had two drops all season. Hopefully, hopefully that won't come back. Those drops will come back. But we'll see. Resigning Troy Hill is good. He's going to man your slot. Uh, Dane Jackson's a good depth piece, but you're kind of hoping you can bring another guy in there that can at least contend for that other starting spot. I don't think Dane Jackson's going to really do much as like the corner two there. And then also J.C. Horn, you're kind of hoping he could stay healthy. But honestly, this is a good free agency. You had to spend a little extra, but it's fine. It's fine. Uh, I don't want to put it in money well spent. I'm going to just put it in overall good moves because you did have to overpay for some of those guys. So I read the one chat that's not talking about the trade. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I want, I want, I want to be able to talk to you guys as well, but I got to get my thoughts. So how about this? After every division, I go back to the chat. We'll do that. We'll roll with that. Which means I got to get through one more team here being – the uh, Atlanta Falcons, who, man, they have been, they've been having a great free agency, in my opinion. Ray Rubin McLeod gives them a really good special teamer that can be a competent wide receiver. Uh, for, what? Keenan Allen got traded to the Bears for a fourth? Yo, and I just saw it in the chat. I have, I have, here, I'll show you. So I have like the ESPN, yes, the ESPN live news, and that literally just popped up. <laughs> For a fourth, I mean, hey, hey, he, he, Keenan Allen is a big, is a big cap hit. He is a big cap hit. Dang. Dang. Uh, did Mike Dana sign with the Cowboys? Hopefully it wasn't too pricey. I haven't seen that one yet. Well, when we get to the Cowboys, I'll look it up. That's freaking wild. Golly. Golly, dude. DJ Moore, Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen is old. He is old, but that is... It's a very welcoming situation for a rookie quarterback. Oh, man. Dang. You know, it may have, just, it may have popped up like a few, four minutes ago, and I was just talking. Whew. Thoughts on what just happened? Uh... 
When I get to the Bears, we'll talk about what just happened. I'm going to just go ahead and refresh this real quick. All right, so back to the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, obviously, the the the, the uh, Darnell Mooney is a good pickup. You're going to be pairing him up there with uh, Drake London. So now you got a little speed there. Hodge was, honestly, he's not that bad of receiver depth for them. I like that. They bring in Rondale Moore, who they can get real creative with. They can have him out the backfield, play him in the slot. The wide receiver room starting to look look pretty darn good. Still feels like maybe you could get another guy there, like someone who can be an alpha or a very complimentary wide receiver too. We haven't seen that from Darnell Mooney last few years. Now some of that was out of his control. Hopefully, hopefully we get to see it, man. Hopefully, uh, Charlie War uh, Warner Warner blocking tight end. Paid $12 million, uh, three years $12 million for. Uh, then re sign Storm Norton. <laughs> uh, regardless, this is money well spent by the Atlanta Falcons. Money well spent. I thought they had a very good free agency. Golly, dude. Keenan Allen. Oh, it didn't happen yet. Mike Dana to the... To the Cowboys. I'm not going to lie to you, dude. I don't think the Cowboys need edge help. The Cowboys don't need edge help. Bears aren't drafting Marvin Harrison Jr. <laughs> They're drafting Caleb Williams. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. All right. All right. We're going to jump to the next division. And then we'll come back to the chat. All right, we got the Minnesota Vikings here. They've made uh, a variety of different moves after losing Kirk Cousins. Kind of is what it is. Got to feel like this team's probably going to draft quarterback. They're probably going to be one of those teams that want to trade up, uh, possibly uh, to that. Like, oh man, I don't know if the Chargers. I don't know if the Chargers now move off of five. Man, maybe they stay there and just take a wide receiver. Ooh, we man, that's gonna be interesting. That's gonna be interesting. But they pick up Sam Darnold. He's a bridge quarterback. Uh, Aaron Jones is gonna be fun on a one-year deal, better than any back they had last season. That's why Alexander Madison gets released. Brandon Powell, honestly, he was a so solid wide receiver three for him last year. I like them picking him back up. Trent Sherfield gives them depth, gives them uh, return capability as well. Then uh, you get the edge help. You get the defensive line help in a bulk. Honestly, the front seven help right here in a bulk. As uh, Jonathan Grenard comes in four years, $76 million. You got Andrew Van Ginkle on two years. I think it was $20 million. His Van Ginkle, very, very familiar with Brian Flores. You get Tillery, who's more of a pass rusher. Than, like You're not going to have him on the field for, uh, to defend the run. And actually, Jonathan Bullard is more of that defend-the-run type. And then Blake Cashman's fun, dude. As long as he can stay healthy, he's been a good linebacker. The problem is he has been unable to stay healthy. Like, all in all, like, I think this has been really solid. They've had, had a very good uh, free agency considering they lost Kirk Cousins. I want to put them... Oh, I can't put them ahead, can I? Put them right here. I feel like I need a move. The Rams here. Feel like I need to. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna keep the Rams there. I'm gonna keep the Rams there. All right, we're gonna go to the Green Bay Packers. They just uh, re-signed AJ Dillon about an hour or so ago, which I'm glad that that came through. I was trying to pick up AJ Dillon in one of my dynasty fantasy football leagues. For a third round pick in this year's draft. Not a third overall, third rounder. Because uh, I was hoping that the Cowboys might pick him up. Because that just means volume. So I was anticipating that. And unfortunately. Or fortunately, I guess. I saw that news come through. And I was like, well, withdraw that trade request. Because Josh Jacobs is going to be the bell cow here. Can you stay healthy? Hopefully. That's, that's kind of the hope. But the dude is a really good back. 
It's a good pickup. You, you get now, you just have a ton of these playmakers on the offense. Uh, they bring in Xavier McKinney, solid safety. They had no safety, so that's good, but more we, more work needs to be done. More work needs to be done. I like them re-signing uh, Keyshawn Nixon. Uh, he played a little slot there, but I feel like he, he's mainly just a return man. You don't necessarily want him on the field a lot. Probably should be just a dime package guy. So, like, all in all, I think uh, the Packers have made some good moves. Might not love paying running backs like that, but you got to acknowledge, hey, getting Jonathan or uh, Josh Jacobs back there sounds hella fun. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's not like the positions that they address. I mean, the positions they address essentially were needs. I mean, you can't really say that about running back, but I mean, you upgraded, but like safety, they're just not that valuable. Unfortunately, here we with the super chat. This is proof. Mainstream media people be talking out their butts earlier today. It came out. Uh, Keenan was safe. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm kind of curious about that because I'm pretty sure wasn't Keenan Allen like uh, I thought they restructured his contract. I could be wrong about that. Really could be wrong about that. But uh, before we move on to the uh, Detroit Lions, let's get some thumbs up. Let's like the video. Kirito, he's in here telling y'all to like the video. Just hit that thumbs up, guys. All right. Detroit Lions. I really like what they've done, free agency. I think it really came together uh, the last today and yesterday. Uh, Graham Glasgow, bringing him back is great. A guy that can play safety and or <laughs> a guy that can play center and guard. Uh, they also bring back uh, Dan Skipper. Uh, well, obviously cost him a game for apparently not reporting eligible. Not going to get into that again. Wasn't his fault. But uh, I like the additions of Marcus Davenport. It's a very, it's a one-year, six million dollar deal. A guy who has been really good when able, when on the field. It's just unfortunately he's been banged up. So you get him on a one-year deal. If he could stay on the field, if he could stay healthy, then that's going to be one hell of a pickup. DJ Reader, this is exactly what they needed. Exactly what they wanted. Get a big meaty boy in there who could stop the run and push the pocket. This is a really good, and I mean really good, compliment to Aleem McNeil. I like it. I like it quite a bit. Uh, they re-sign uh, Reeves Mabin, special teamer, solid. One of the better ones in the league. Carlton Davis trade. Kind of hoping it was Legereus Steve, but it is what it is. They give up a third rounder. They get two six rounders. Listen, Carlton Davis. When I think I said this uh, in one of my other videos, he's like one of three extremes. Either he's really good, really bad, or just really hurt. There's really no in between when it comes to him. Then Manuel Mosley, bringing him back. He's had a bad stretch of back to back ACL injuries, but when on the field back with the Niners, he was a good player. So you're hoping he could stay healthy and that good player's still there. Meek Robertson's really good depth. I just l really like what the Lions have done. Really, really do. Might not be like the big, massive move, but they've been good moves. They have been good moves. Do I want to? I think I'm going to put them right here. I might have them ahead of the Rams. I'm going to be honest. I think I'm going to. think I'm going to have them ahead of the Rams. Yeah, I really like that DJ Reader pickup. So I'm going to have them there. Again, I'm kind of on the fence about where to put LA, here or here. All right, we got the Chicago Bears. All right, we're going to talk about the Bears, talk about what they just did. Uh, I don't see them having her on here yet. Talk about what they just did, and then after this, I'm going to see what's going on in the chat. So talk to me, chat. Talk to me. Chicago Bears. If you if you didn't know, now you know. They have acquired Keenan Allen for a fourth round pick. Freaking phenomenal. Keenan Allen, DJ Moore. They bring in DeAndre Swift. I feel like they didn't have to, but hey, they went out, they spent, they wanted him. I get it. It is what it is. 
But golly, that Keenan Allen, that Keenan Allen pickup blew my pants off. It's a good thing you can only see down like up here. I, l I really like the Coleman Shelton pickup. I was kind of scared that they were going to just trade for Ryan Bates and call it a day that he's going to play center. I think Bates is a good depth guy. I don't know if I like him as a full-time starter. Shelton last year was a very solid, might not have been the best center in the league, but he was relatively solid. So now you have not only competition, but depth there at the center position. It might be the worst position on your offensive line, but by no means do I think it is a weakness. Uh, hey, they also bring in Curhan. Depth. Depth. So is Matt Pryor. Uh, Gerald Everett, he's got a pass with Shane uh, Waldron Day back to Seattle. He's going to come in there, uh, be a very good tight end two for him. If that's something you, you've had to notice about Gerald Everett the last couple of years, that the guy gets gassed quick. He can't play a full drive anymore. Uh, like, well, how old is Gerald Everett? Doesn't feel like he's that old, but it's kind of been in the league for a minute. Wow, 29 years old, and he already feels like an old man. Well, the dude does get gassed. That was kind of a problem with the Niners uh, the last couple of seasons. So, I think having him as like a compliment to Cole uh, Komet, really good. The biggest move they made, though, the biggest move, Jalen uh, Johnson. Bringing him back. Not only throwing the franchise tag on, being able to extend him. He's, for me at least, he, he is one of, if not the best corner in the NFL. I'm a huge Jalen Johnson fan. I loved him coming out of Utah. Great pickup. I thought the Kevin uh, Bayard pickup was big too. Keep in mind, this guy was a top 10 center just a year ago. Had a down year with the Eagles. You could say that about the whole secondary when it comes to Philadelphia though. Jonathan Owens, solid special teamer, can play safety, more of a depth guy though. I think the Bears have absolutely had a phenomenal free agency, especially with the most recent move. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put them right here for now. I'm going to put them right here for now. I feel like they could jump the Atlanta Falcons though. I feel like they could jump. All right. What do we got cooking in the chat? What do we got cooking? At Bro Schmo. You want to direct a comment my way, ask me a question, make a statement. That way it highlights my name for me. You could always super chat. It's a good way to support the channel as well. We got Chicago Bears are winning the North. I don't know about that just yet. I don't know about that. Packers are still pretty good. Packers are still pretty good. Uh, I mean, okay, think about this. Keenan Allen for a fourth. Mark Cooper went to the Browns for a fifth. These teams that find themselves in kind of a terrible cap situation, sometimes you just got to let guys go on a budget. So sometimes that it is what it is. Atlanta has the tampering allegation. No, no one cares. No one cares about the tampering allegation. No one cares. <laughs> All right, yeah, all y'all talking about right now is the uh, is the Keenan Allen move. Uh, is Neighbors the pick for the Chargers or Alt because of a deep wide receiver class? Uh, I think I would probably go with Neighbors at this point. I think both are viable options. I'm probably going with Neighbors. Uh, I haven't seen the Hollywood Brown to the Chiefs. Uh, I don't I haven't seen if that is official. At least I personally haven't seen that if that's been official yet. Cowboys need to stop the uh need run stop help. Uh Dana can be a DT edge hybrid. Yeah, I don't like that dust. I don't like that. I don't like having a guy be a hybrid at like he's like 265. Yo, like, just get actual depth, my man. Get actual depth. Okay, here we go. I see it. Adam Schefter. 
Hollywood Brown, one year deal with the Chiefs. That's that's hella fun, dude. That's hella fun. Uh Andre says off topic, but did did you play football at college? Hell no, dude. I'm 5'8, 170. Hell no, I played I didn't play any college ball. That's why I'm on YouTube. Uh, I was a walk-on running back in college, but I have some cardiac problems, so I had to leave uh, the team. That sucks, dude. Sorry, Andre. Nah, I didn't play college ball. There was no way I would have been able to play college ball. One, size. Two, I'm, I wasn't that good. And you know what they say. For those, for those who can't, our YouTube channel. Uh, does this stop the Bears from going wide receiver at nine? No. Are you kidding, dude? Throw a Roma Dunze in there, dude. Roma Dunze. DJ Moore. Keaton Allen. Hot diggity dog. I love it. I lo lo love it. Like, why stop? Why stop? Save your worthy to pair with Hollywood Brown. Could be interesting. Or they could go... Like, honestly... I feel like the Chiefs could go whatever wide receiver they want. Whatever type they think they need, they could go with it at 32. They could even choose to go to, to wait at 64. Maybe go get a dog like a, a Jalen Polk, I think would be pretty good too. Get him at the back end of the second round. Tuesday might not drop to nine. That's true. That's true. But, I mean, if you think about it, uh, let's say wide receiver three. Let, okay, let's say Chargers take Malik Neighbors or Roma Dunze. Then the Giants would have to take a receiver. That's possible. They can. But then you go to pick seven. Titan, Titans aren't taking a wide receiver. They just paid Calvin really all that money. You go to Atlanta, I'd still be willing to draft a wide receiver if I'm in Atlanta, but they're likely probably going to go with Edge or the first def or wh whoever the top defensive player is for them on their board. That's where they're probably going. So if the Giants don't go wide receiver, or it, essentially if the Giants or the Chargers, if one of those teams don't go wide receiver, you're probably looking at Roman Dunes or Malik Neighbors there at nine. So. All right, let's get back into this sucker with the Washington Commanders, they get a solid backup in Marcus Mariota. Mariota, excuse me. Austin Eckler, I think that's a good compliment to Brian Robinson. Uh, the Zach Ertz deal is nice. You get, I mean, you get an old head in there, but I mean, you just cut Logan Thomas. I don't like the Allegretti pickup. I don't. I think he's depth at best, and I mean, you didn't, they didn't pay him a lot, so hopefully that's what that means. Tyler Biotis, she's going to come in there and play center. That's good pickup. It was kind of expected that uh, Biotis, Biotis, whatever he goes by, and Dorrance Armstrong, it was kind of expected if the Cowboys didn't retain those guys, they'd probably follow Dan Quinn. And then Ke Keelan Farrell. Dude, I mean, essentially they have a they have rotation players at the edge positions, right? You got Armstrong, you got Farrell. Uh, who's the other cat that they signed on the edge? They signed someone else. Not Ob uh, Obata. Uh, who was the other cat? Oh, his name is escaping me right now. Yeah, Keenan Allen to Chicago is kind of nuts. I'm a fan of Logan Thomas too, but he's up there in age and he gets banged up quite a bit. Uh, I do like neighbors more than Adunze. I can confirm. Dante Fowler. Dang it. I, I, sh I should have known that, man. He's a Dan Quinn guy. And Dante Fowler. So essentially, they got some rotation guys. I mean, they're going to be playing some starting snaps. I think that's fine for Armstrong. I honestly think his arrow's pointing up. But Fowler and Farrell at this point, they're, they're better rotation guys than actual starters. Sorry, Jamin Davis. I guess... You're, I guess you're not playing linebacker anymore for the Commanders. They bring in Frankie Louvu. They bring in Bobby Wagner. I mean, there's still a role for Jamin Davis. It's just, 
I mean, Jeremy Chin, that's a dude that's going to be around the box. They can maybe use him like, uh, what is it, Mark Marquis Bell, the uh, former Florida A&M safety, how he was used with the uh, Cowboys last year. Like Jeremy Chin, he is going to be all around the box, dude. He's going to be in the slot. They're going to play him like a dimebacker. I think I solely think that's how, how they're going to roll with him. So I don't think Jamin Davis is I think he ends up just getting knocked down the uh the pecking order, so to speak. They also traded Sam Howell, got some more picks. So I think they have like five picks in the top 72, which is just utterly ludicrous. That's just it's a great position to be in. So I'm feeling really good. Didn't uh Jamin didn't Jamison Crowder come back to the uh Commanders as well. Here, let me scroll through this news. It's not up here, but I feel like here. Okay. I feel like Crowder went back to the Commanders. Or did I get that wrong? I'm trying to look right now. Maybe what? Yeah, he did. Okay, good. Good. I knew he he ended up somewhere. I just couldn't remember uh, off the top of my head. So, like honestly, man, this this is for for the Commanders. This has gone from like money well spent to like th this is a really good free agency for them. They, they've really I feel like turned around. Like the secondary, like they they need to figure out left tackle. They need to figure out the secondary. Listen, Tyron Smith is out there. Probably not likely, but Trent Brown. Go out and get yourself Trent Brown? Not so bad. Not so bad. So I want to put him right here. Maybe actually in front of the Lions. Nah. I'm going to stick with it like that. I think that's fine. All right. Let's keep rolling. Let's talk about Philadelphia Eagles. Did they tamper? Who who knows? I'm just not gonna I'm not gonna lie. I don't care. Uh they go out and get Saquon Barkley. I know some Eagles fans are gonna love that. Kind of is what it is. Uh you really want us to dude Trent Brown when healthy is good. He's better than what you have currently at tackle. Any option you have at tackle, Trent Brown's literally better. Just throwing that out there. Uh, I, I really like the Sam Howe trade. I, I think it's good for Sam Howe. Even if he ends up losing the starting job to Geno Smith, it, it's good opportunity for Sam Howe. And it's a good fresh start. All right, so they grab Saquon Barkley. Cool, it's an upgrade. I still don't like the idea of paying running backs, but... Uh, I mean, he's going to be running behind one of the best offensive lines in football. He's going to be uber productive. Like, this next three years of Barkley's contract, if he can stay healthy, is going to be freaking amazing. Freaking amazing. Uh, the Falcons, yeah, they said the Falcons may have temp tampered. All right, and then uh, they pick up Devontae Parker. That's kind of whatever. He's wide receiver four, five for them. He's depth. Uh, the extended Landon Dickerson, phenomenal, brought back Brandon Graham. They still got to move Hassan Reddick and Josh Sweat. Honestly, they probably just need to. They just need to move one of those guys. Probably with it being Reddick, you probably want to keep Sweat. Uh, but because they got they got Bryce Huff there, but honestly, it's like I. I know Nolan Smith's a good run stopper. He is undersized, but he's a good run stopper. So I'm a little bit curious how the, how this defense is going to operate. Uh, they bring in Julian Aquawara. I actually kind of like that. I was a big Aquawara fan coming out of Notre Dame. Hasn't developed the way I thought he would. Part of that was injuries, but is what it is. I like him just being on the roster, even if he ends up not making the team. Uh, Devin White, one year deal. That's freaking. That's awesome. I have a feeling this team's going to be blitzing a lot. I have a feeling this team is going to be blitzing a hell of a lot. 
a hell of a lot. I mean, look at the guys they brought in, dude. You got Zach Bond, Julian Akawara, Devin White, Huff. Like, they're, they're going to be blitzing a ton, dude. Vic Fangio, watch out. Uh, CJ Gardner Johnson, him coming back is real nice. They had that empty spot there in the slot, which he'll be playing safety and slot. But again, last time we saw uh, Chauncey Gardner Johnson in a Eagles uniform, he was hella good. Like, all in all, this is a good free agency. It doesn't blow me away, but it's, I think it's one of the better free agent classes out there. Uh, I think. I think I would probably put it right here. Just because I think the Vikings kind of... Do I think it was better than the Vikings? I don't know. You know what's funny? It's actually very comparable. Yeah, I think the Vikings had a better, better, better go at it. Very comparable to the Vikings. Grab it linebacker. Uh, edge. Running back. <laughs> It's kind of funny how comparable it is. Uh, the New York Giants, their biggest signing. Yo, let's pour it out. We already know who their bit, what their biggest move was. They got Drew Locke. Danny Dimes, get out of here. Nah, nah, not really. But I do like Drew Locke. He was fun last year for like what started like two games or whatnot. Well, maybe. But I think he, I think he, at the very least, someone that can challenge Daniel Jones. This is the thing. This is what when they said, yeah, no, we'll, we'll make a move at quarterback. This is what I expected. I knew they weren't drafting a quarterback. I still don't believe they're drafting quarterback. Should they draft a quarterback? I think they should. It sh they should definitely be open to it. But I think they're going to just go ahead and go down with the Danny Dimes ship at this point. At least for another year. Devin Singletary is a good pickup after losing Saquon. I think that's very solid. Uh, Isaiah McKenzie's a good uh, special teamer. Uh, just honestly a fun gadget player to kind of have, but really a wide receiver four or five. Uh, the Jermaine Luminor is a great pickup. Like part of me thinks he's going to end up starting over Evan Neal. Part of me thinks Evan Neal might end up moving to guard. I don't know. We'll see. We'll find out. Let's just kind of let this thing play out. But like Luminor is hella good. They got Runyon. Runyon's probably going to be playing right guard. That's where he played, I think, for... Was he playing right guard for the Packers? I want to say he was because they had... I think Jenkins was playing left guard. Or do I got that mixed up? Let me just check real quick. Yes, yes. Okay, he was playing right guard. So you're going to end up moving, if they do do this, uh, moving Evan Neal to the left side, which... Honestly, that's where he was at his best in college. That's where he was in his final year. Uh, the Brian Burns trade. They got him for cheap. Thing is, they paid him a hell of a lot of money. Straight up, Burns better have that stinking Josh Allen breakout season. Like, Burns and Allen, those were two guys I was like, okay, man, they, they've been solid, but they haven't had that breakout into elite yet. Josh Allen had that last season. Brian Burns, can you have that? Now he's going to be across from uh, KT, Kayvon Thibodeau. Now Kayvon Thibodeau doesn't have to worry about, you know, being the only threat along that defensive line outside of, of course, Dexter Lawrence, who is one of the best in the game. Uh, Jalen Mills is kind of whatever sign in that's, what is the word? Depth. So I think I'm going to put the Giants down here. Uh, yeah, yeah, because I don't think they just spent money. I honestly don't think they just went out and spent money. But I mean, I don't think any of their maybe I need a chain. Maybe yeah, money was spent, and it's fine. Okay, yeah, 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 we're gonna make a category right here called money was spent, and it's fine. I don't really think it's like overall really good, like good moves, like in the same caliber as these teams. But I think, oh, okay. I forgot about Brian Byrne, dude. Brian Burns is kind of the, I, I got to remember. I'm just looking at what money they spent. So yeah, Brian Burns kind of changes that. 
So we're going to go right here with them. I'm going to go right here. That sounds right. There we go. There we go. Almost forgot about Brian Burns. Uh, okay, this will be quick. Cowboys, they managed to snake Eric Kendricks from the Niners. It's a good pickup, but it's the only thing they've done. You know that the, uh, we have a category named Jerry Jones's Yacht. The Cowboys are going there. They've done nothing in free agency. All right, before we move to the AFC, I'm gonna, I guess I'm going to shout out my sponsor real quick, then I'll get to y'all in the chat. But uh, the sponsor of this, this live stream is Aurora. It's a digital security app. Helps you with VPNs. It encrypts your passwords. Ensures that scammers and spammers can't get your uh, data. They right now, if you use the link in the description, they have a free 14-day trial. But you got to use the link in the description. It's going to ask you who referred you. Just put email. They don't have me as a sponsor yet. We're in this whole trial run period. That's why I'm telling you. all Just go sign up. It's free and then cancel it after 14 days if you got what you wanted from it. Or you could keep it. It's only $12 a month. That's pretty good for all that they include there. Like I said, VPN, antivirus. Uh, they got password encryption and whatnot. So remember, link in the description. When you sign up, it'll ask for a referral. Just put email. It won't ask you for an email. You just put the little, it'll be like a little scroll thing. and It'll be like email. All right. Trade Brandon Ayuk to Detroit. I don't think, uh, I don't think that is going to happen. I honestly don't think Brandon Ayuk is going to move. But we'll see, man. We'll see. We've had some interesting moves in free agency, so it's not out of the wheelhouse. It's not out of the realm of a possibility. Uh, Palmer Johnson and a draft player could be a pretty good trio. Also, parting ways with two good wide receivers means that Johnson might break out. Mike Zimmer was, was the one that got Kendrick, not Jones. What? I don't know what that last part is. Daniel Jones is underrated. His offensive line receivers have been absolute dog water his whole career. That's why Tommy DeVito and Tyrod Taylor looked better last year than Danny Dimes because apparently no one could succeed under the uh, under those circumstances. <laughs> uh, listen, Daniel Jones to me is a low end starter. He is a low-end starter. If you're going to hitch your horse to him, then it's going to be, you're going you're to end up fired. He's a low-end starter. You should be looking for the next guy. That's my opinion on Daniel Jones. J-Mo going to have a breakout year? That'd be nice. I was a big J-Mo guy coming out. Uh, boys never tried to get, or Jones, boys never tried to get him. Zimmer got him. Got who? We're talking about Kendrick? I mean, I was just ma I just made a joke, guys. Not that serious. Is Jetta on the table for the Chargers? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, if, if Justin Jefferson is on the market, then yeah, if I'm the Chargers, I'm, I'm calling. I'm calling around. Is Sneed to the Colts the top prediction given that Ballard given that Ballard history, need and fit? Uh yeah, I think right now the two betting favorites are uh the Colts and him just re-signing with the Chiefs. Uh don't need to trade for Mike Williams. He is a free agent. Uh is Keenan Allen move for Caleb or Fields? Listen, on I I I believe that the Bears are drafting Caleb Williams. And I will not stop believing that until they trade that pick. That's where I'm at with it. I think it's a move to surround your new franchise quarterback with all the talent in the world. Daniel Jones is better than people say he is. Well, what, okay, okay, Drake, Drake. 
What up, Dustin? How you doing? Drake, what do pe people say he is? Because what I'm saying is he's a low-end starter. What do I mean by low-end? Anywhere from like the 23rd to the 32nd best starter in the league. That's what I think of Daniel Jones. Do you think he is better than that? I think there's times where he sneaks into the top 20. But those times are far and few between. What up, Borak? Hey, while y'all enter here, go ahead, smack that thumbs up. Is Snead better in zone or in man? I like him better in man. Which is going to be interesting in Gus Bradley's cover three. But it'll be fine. I mean, cover three essentially is man after 10 yards, so... And it is what it is. Yep, Hollywood Brown to the Chiefs. Uh, any word on Kamara is moved. Like Alvin Kamara? Dude, no one's going to be trading. Listen. If Alvin Kamara gets traded, it's going to be for like a 6th, 7th round pick. Jonathan Harris just went to the Dolphins. I don't know who. I don't even know who Jonathan Harris is. I know Jonathan Cooper. What the hell's Jonathan Harris? Hmm. Well, he does. He plays along the defensive line as well. That's kind of funny. Well, I mean, not the Cooper plays edge, and this cat plays interior. I'm not too familiar with this guy's game. This guy hasn't played a lot of football. Okay, so that's why I don't know who he is. I was like, I'm not familiar with that name. Colts did run a lot of cover one too, considering his uh. Play call in history. That's true. That's true. Uh, thoughts on Keenan Allen going to the Bears for a fourth round pick. Great, great move by the Bears. Good for Chargers getting something out of them, uh, which is wild. I honestly thought between Mike Williams, Khalil Mack, Keenan Allen, and Joey Bosa, Keenan Allen was the least likely one to move. We saw Mike Williams. He was the most likely. To get cut, he did. They ended up restructuring Cleo Mack and uh, Bosa's deals. And I thought word came out that they restructured Keenan Allen's deal or, or reworked it. But then they end up moving him. Kind of wild. Kind of wild. So disappointed in my Pats being the same old Pats. Would T. Higgins be worth a second and a lot of money? Oh, I'm kind of indifferent on that, man. I, I like T. Higgins, but I'm not confident that he's like an alpha one, and you'd probably have to pay him like an alpha one. And So if I'm a team, I think I'm more willing to let another team take that risk. Yeah, that trade was definitely out of nowhere. It 100% is true. The win against Rodgers in Green Bay, the playoff win against the Vikings, all that thrown to Richie James and Isaiah Hoggins and the trash offensive line. Trash O-line, hero ball. Yo, okay, but Drake, Daniel Jones, do you, okay. Can you explain this guy that Daniel Jones isn't good? Okay, Drake, I got a question for you. Would you build your franchise around Daniel Jones? Would you build your franchise around Daniel Jones? You could talk about his accolades. Nick Foles won a Super Bowl. Super Bowl MVP. Then he goes to the Jags. How'd that go? Stephon, I honestly don't think Stephon Diggs is moving. He's like this every offseason. <laughs> All right, we're we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and start the AFC real quick here. Hey, Barrett, Barrett Gay, thank you for the super chat, dude. If you got a question, at Bro Schmo in the chat, dude. Don't, uh, hey man, don't just give money. Please throw a question in there, dude. 
or or a comment. Have me read something off, dude. I appreciate the super chat so much. Uh, I would not give up on Daniel Jones yet because you've never seen him in a good offense. Not my question. My question, would you build your franchise around Daniel Jones? Yes or no? Drake, would you build your franchise around Daniel Jones? Yes or no? <laughs> yeah, I'm all with the live news. Uh, Barak, uh, the question is, would you, would you, would you start your, would you basically build your franchise around Daniel Jones? I would, I would try to if he was my quarterback right now. Why? 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 Yeah, I did the Panthers a little bit ago, Andrew. You could go back in the stream, check that out. Why would you start your franchise around? Okay, if he was the guy you had, how why how would how do you not view that guy? How do you not view Daniel Jones as a bridge option at that point? At this point, at best, he is Gardner Menchu. At best. Is that a bad thing? No, dude, Gardner Menchu's still out there making money. Somehow finding, finding ways to start for teams. It's wild. I think, though, Daniel Jones is that type of guy. He's going to be popping team to team at this point. At least Daniel Jones is better than Justin Fields. That's yet to be seen. I I I I don't say I I'd be more willing to go with Justin Fields than uh Daniel Jones. All right, all right, all right, all right. Drake, every dog has their day, dude. Like Daniel Jones, what did he do last year? Oh, because he he had this he had one playoff win where he did something good. Yay! And it's like, uh, so? No one cares. What have you done for me lately? What have you done for me this whole time? Why are we paying Daniel Jones? Big time money. Oh, uh, was that? Macy? Can you say hi to my peeps? You're on my TV. We're tracking free agency. Oh. What up, peeps? All right, let's do this. Chargers. Obviously, they just made that big move. Keenan Allen. I think this, this is probably how, how we got back on that Keenan Allen topic. But largely, they were a team that couldn't do anything or couldn't do a lot because they were restricted by their cap. They had to really decide what they were going to do with players like Mike Williams, like Khalil Mack, like Joey Bosa, like Keenan Allen. They released Mike Williams. They restructured Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack's contracts, and then they decide to trade Keenan Allen. So they've been kind of limited with what they could do. Honestly, I think Will Disley and Gus Edwards are fine pickups. They're not bad. They also got Hayden Hurst here. Hayden Hurst, hey, back to playing football. It's great to see. But, like, at the end of the day, man, I don't think they made bad moves. Like, I know some people would be like, well, Keenan Allen for a fourth. It's like, dude, Amari Cooper went for a fifth. When teams know you're in a financial hole and you have to shed cap, they're going to take advantage of that. I Honestly, getting him for a fourth, like getting a fourth back for him probably wasn't bad. He's 32. He struggled with injuries over his career. You got to think about that. So I'm going to put them in. Uh, I'm going to put them right here. Next to the Saints on Jerry Jones's yacht. Again, they haven't really done too much in free agency outside of giving Keenan Allen away. <sighs> All right, Las Vegas Raiders. So the big move was Christian Wilkins. I'm a Dolphins fan. I love Christian Wilkins. I knew we couldn't pay. Ju I, I knew we couldn't pay Christian Wilkins. I hope he has a hell of a career over in Vegas. He's a hell of a player. It was a great pickup. Resigning Andre James was a good was good good move by the Raiders. He's been solid for him. 
Amir Abdullah, it's good depth in the run back room. It's more so what he can do on special teams for you. And he's been a pretty good special teamer. That's why he's back with the squad. And then they bring in Gardner Minshew. Gardner Minshew feels like a bridge option, right? Because two years, $25 million. You're not paying him that to compete with Aiden O'Connell. It's essentially they know what they have in Aiden O'Connell and they were looking for a better option. Apparently, I don't think... Either this move tells me one of two things. One, either they weren't in on the quarterbacks in this class, which I don't think that's the case. Or two, they weren't in a... They didn't feel like they were in a position to make a move on one of the quarterbacks in this class. That one, I think, is probably the case. So they go Garner Minshew. And honestly, it's not a bad move, man. Honestly, I, I think they've had good moves. It's solid. Like, uh, I mean, I most just want to put them in money was spent. I mean, I, just because I like their moves, like Garner Minshew... Honestly, could end up biting them in the keister uh, in terms of trying to get a franchise quarterback somewhere down the road. That's the only thing. That's the only thing for me. So I'll put them in money was spent. And it's fine. I like that last part. And it's fine. (laughs) And it was fine. There we go. I think that's I think that's a good Raider category. <laughs> all right, all right. We got the Chiefs. They just acquired Hollywood Brown. One year, eleven million. Not bad. What was his projection? Here we go. I'll pull up what I think it was Spot Rack that I got the projection from. Uh, and it was it was one year, twelve million. So look at that, almost right on the money. I like that. They get a legit vertical threat. I don't think they're done with the wide receiver position by any means, though. Don't think they're done with the wide receiver position by any means. Irv Smith's kind of a whatever pickup at this point. Guy can't stay healthy. Uh, You know that the move for Chris Jones, the franchise tag, Legereus Sneed, because uh, ultimately they were like, okay, we know we're going to keep Jones. I mean, he's the best at his position at this point. I think he's probably past Aaron Donald as Aaron Donald's grown grown older, but still Aaron Donald's like hella dominant. So it's like those two guys. But uh, at the very least, knowing you have such a talented corner, he's like a, a top five corner easy in this league. And you know you could at least get something for that. I'm still curious if they may resign him. So that's what I'm intrigued about. Uh, they bring back Drew Tranquil. Uh, they, they signed Deion Bush. There's their special teamer. Uh, Matt Ariza, they lost Townsend and um, free agency. And honestly, Ariza was kind of a high-profile kicker when he was coming out of San Diego State. Obviously, all that nonsense happened, and now he's back in the league. Uh, so it's cool to see. Hopefully, he's still got the same boot. Uh, but ultimately, I think that essentially they just go in, I want to say just resigning their guys. But, I mean, that, that, honestly, that Hollywood Brown move is kind of clutch. So, I'm going to put them ahead of the Bucks Because, ultimately, that's what they were doing. Just re-signing their guys. Oh, man. So, Broncos are essentially just, hey, did you, is, hey, did you used to play for Sean Payton? Come on. Come on, Malcolm Roach. Little Jordan Humphrey. He was with them last year. Come on. Their best move has literally been re-signing P.J. Locke, who went from special teamer to legitimate good starter for this team last year. I don't like the Brandon Jones pickup. I don't think he's that good of a safety. How do you know? I'm a Dolphins fan. I had to deal with it. So kind of is what it is. So they are going to join the Fal- or Falcons, the uh, Cardinals here with... Poor use of funds, which is funny enough. They didn't have a ton of funds to work with. But, I mean, they trade Jerry Judy. Don't get a lot for him. This is why you probably should have traded him prior to the trade deadline. Probably could have got at least a day two pick. Instead of asking for a first round pick because that was just stupid. And it is what it is. Okay, we got the Tennessee Titans. They signed Mason Rudolph as the backup. 
on a solid backup deal. It is what it is. We know this is Will Levis, uh, Levis's team. And then they spend a lot of money at Cal for Calvin Ridley. Listen, I like Calvin Ridley. I didn't think it was going to be worth that much. I thought he might get like a one-year deal. Like another like prove-it deal. Because like his year in Jacksonville was a bit up, a bit down. He gave this man $92 million. 50 of it guaranteed. Holy smokes. I mean, now they got a good route runner. Now they got legit separation in that wide receiver core. I mean, I like Calvin Ridley being on this team. I don't know if I love him at that price. Tony Pollard, three years, $24 million. I think that's fine. But again, I'm kind of that, you know, you don't have to pay running backs. Just go ahead and draft a new one. It's typically a good way to go. They have Tajay Spears, who, who was on the field more than Derrick Henry last year, and he was good. So, like, uh, the Tony Pollard pickup is kind of like, I'm kind of like this about it. I love the Lloyd Cushenberry pickup. Honestly, for me, this was their best sign-in. He's going to go there, and, like, he's been really solid for the Broncos the last couple of years. He's going to go in there and just immediately be the best player on that offensive line. That's right. I said it. Hopefully, Peter Skronsky, you know, keeps ascending. But Cushenberry is the best player on that offensive line as it stands right now. Uh, I've never been a big fan of Kenneth Murray. We've seen him at the Chargers go through stints where it's like, okay, he's not that good at a linebacker. Maybe we could play him as an edge player. Okay, that didn't work. Maybe you are a linebacker. Maybe it's starting to click for him. He's still a relatively young player, I think. I think he's probably like 27, right? Uh, 25! He's even younger than I thought! Golly, it feels like he was drafted ages ago by the Chargers. Chargers gave up a second and a third round pick to move up to get him to the Patriots. But, uh, like again, I mean, I feel like he's very meh. But it kind of is what it is. They got a solid player next to him. And um, who was their, uh, what was it, Giddens? Who was their other linebacker there that just kind of broke out this year? Big reason why Monty Rice is no longer on the team. Uh, Jack Gibbons. There we go. Yeah, so he kind of like just emerged this year. I mean, that's going to be the guy that can free up, take on offensive linemen, take on blockers. And it's going to... Free up, hopefully, for Kenneth Murray to do something. So we'll see. Jadobi Awuzie is a good pickup. They need some stability in that secondary. He gives them that. I like that. So we go ahead. We're going to put him, or we're going to put them. Uh, part of me wants to say money was spent, and it's fine. <laughs> is that where I want to put them? Because, I mean, it's really the Cushionberry and the Ouzier picks I like. I get Calvin Ridley. That makes sense. I may not love the contract, but it makes sense. I mean, Pollard didn't make a ton of sense. I don't love Murray. Yeah, maybe we just stick them here with the Raiders. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to put the Raiders ahead of them. Yeah, yeah, we'll go with that. All right, man. Jacksonville Jaguars made some moves. They made... Some moves. All right, so they pick up Mac Jones, six-round pick. They get a backup quarterback. It is what it is. They go out. They get Gabe Davis. I'm not the biggest Gabe Davis guy. I do like, like, just because the guy plays Houdini. Now you see me, now you don't. If they could kind of unlock that big play potential at more of a consistent rate, then that's great. That's awesome. Then he'll end up being worth the money they pay him because the max value on that deal is 50 million. We'll see. We'll see. Devin Duvernay gives him some return capabilities. Ezra Cleveland re-signing. I think that's good because he kind of gets a fresh start because last year, even when they traded for him, they wanted him to be a guard, but they had so many injuries at tackle, he had to play tackle. And that's just not his spot in the NFL. It was in college at Boise State. It's just not in the NFL. Mitch Morris is a good pickup. Luke Fortner, I told you guys, he wasn't wasn't all that great. His rookie year, no matter what Jaguars fans want to tell themselves. 
Franchise tag in Allen to be expected. I hope they get a deal done with him. But picking up Eric Armstead was, woo, what a move. What a pickup. I love that. They got Trevon Walker there too. Ronald Darby's nice, but I still think, honestly, for the Jags, corner and wide receiver are still on the table at pick 17. They're still on the freaking table. Like Ronald Darby, good depth. You probably want to look for that other starter with a bit more upside. Darnell Savage is nice. I don't know if he's going to... He's going to be playing in the box quite a bit, but I'm I'm kind of curious if they're going to play him more in the slot. Because uh, I, I honestly... It really depends what they want to do with Antonio Johnson if they see him as their slot guy. That ain't it. Uh, currently on our lads, he's listed as their starter at safety. They did bring back Daniel Thomas, more special teamer though. Yeah, they got Antonio Johnson listed in the nickel, so maybe they're looking at Darnell Savage as more of the slot option or as the uh, as a safety option, which is fine. I think that's all right. I think that's okay. There, uh, Eric Armstead pickup kind of makes this kind of makes me want to push it into into this range. And I think, yeah, I'm going to put it just one spot ahead of the Packers. I uh, haven't seen any other new moves come through, so keep rolling. All right, all right, all right. We got the Colts. Straight up, the Colts are just resigning their own guys. They bring in Flacco. Cool, he's the backup quarterback. The Colts were like, hey, we got some good young well, yeah, we got some good parts here. Let's bring him back. Franchise tag, Michael Pittman. Get a deal done. Bring back uh, Tyquan Lewis. Bring uh, back Grover Stewart, one of the best run defenders in the league. Bring back Zari, uh, Zaire Franklin. They bring back uh, Kenny Moore, which is great. He wants to die a cult. He's going to get to live out his dream. It's phenomenal. Uh, so, like, yeah, I mean, this, this we're just going to put them in re-signing their guys. There's not really much to talk about here. Going to the Houston Texans. Boy, man, from what they did on day one to what they what they did on day two, really kind of a game changer. First things first, I hate the Joe Mixon contract. There, I said it. They spent a seventh rounder to grab him. I was like, you know what? That's solid. You just lost. Devin uh, Singletary, you brought in Joe Mixon. He's a reliable hand. Three years, $27 million? I don't love it. I'm kind of curious what the contract actually looks like, and uh, I imagine they, they probably can get out of it after a year or two. So I'm not going to be too terrible. Oh, yeah, I forgot about Roquan Davis to the Colts. Forgot about that one. How can I forget about the Dolphin great Roquan Davis? I mean, he's a big body. He's a big body. Essentially, he's, when Grover Stewart's not on the field, he's going to be Grover Stewart. Uh, they bring back uh, Dalton Schultz. Uh, they bring back uh, Desmond Keene. And uh, they, they bring back Bear Baron, which is great. He, he's a good kicker. Hopefully, he can stay healthy. And then they start making these little sign-ins, right? Little signs that were pretty darn solid. I'll get you in a second, Gojo. Be with you. Like Tim Settle, really good. Danico Entry, really good. I like that quite a bit. Uh, they 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 bring in uh, Jeffrey Okuda, solid, solid. But these are little sign-ins. I need something to really wet my pa that that like this wets my palate. But I I'm ready for the entree. I'm ready for dinner. Where's that big meaty steak? And then they get Daniel Hunter. There's the big meaty steak. Let me let go, Josh, real quick. Dinner, buddy. Hell of a pickup. Hell of a pickup. This offense, this defensive line feels nuts. Literally, the Texans could do whatever the hell they want in the draft. The world is their oyster. Go sh chuck that oyster. Uh, Aziz Alshir 
he he played with uh or didn't play with but he was with uh D'Amico D'Amico yeah there we go D'Amico Ryan's in uh San Fran he's a really good run stuffer I don't think like he's fine enough in coverage but he's mainly a run stuffer uh I mean I'm not gonna lie to y'all I would love to see this team go in on Legarius Sneed I want I would love to see that I mean love 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 to see that uh so i'm gonna move the texans up here to um i feel like i feel like probably right here yeah because i mean they got a lot they got a lot and they have that one big move the lions don't have like dj reader is probably the best move the lions made or the biggest, at least. But, yeah. Yeah, let's just go with them there. All right, let's get into the AFC North real quick. As we got the Pittsburgh Steelers. Russell Wilson, probably their best, best pickup. That's right. I said it. Over Patrick Queen. I think so, at least for the price. I mean, they got Russell Wilson for $1.7 million. Kind of solid. They end up getting uh, Patrick Queen for three years, $41 million. That's great for a linebacker who is entering his prime. Finally, after long, long years, it feels like, the Steelers have a linebacker. They've been really looking for that. Uh, they've been shooting their shots here and there, whether it's uh, drafting uh, Devin Bush Bringing like Miles Jack and uh, like Nochon Alexander and stuff. I don't love the trade. Like Deontay Johnson, I get it. You just, you were going to part with him anyway. I mean, you get a starter at corner. Like Dante Jackson's fine. But feels like you could, a little bit more value could have been had. I mean, at least like, I mean, I guess at least you turn that seventh rounder into a solid enough sixth. It gets fine. So, like, uh, it's not a poor use of funds. That's not it. Little cap, little moves. I don't think that's necessarily true because they actually have quite a bit of cap. So I think I'll put them in money was well, money. That's the problem. Money wasn't spent. That's the problem. You know what we're you know where we're putting them? We're gonna put them on Jerry Jones's yacht. We're gonna put them on Jerry Jones's yacht. Cause godly, dude, they you can make more moves than this. Like I feel like they have enough draft cap or uh cap to make more moves than this. Tyler Boyd to the Steelers. Ooh. I like that. That would be nice. Tyler Boyd to the Steelers would be really nice. I haven't seen that go official. That would be nice. All right, let's go to Cleveland Browns. Making a lot of good moves. Working with the little, but they are doing a lot with the little. Being able to retain a lot of their guys. They brought back Maurice Hurst, uh, Shelby Harris, Zadari Smith being the biggest one. They were able to get... Jameis Winston, who is a solid backup in the league. Uh, oh, they, wait, they signed Adam Troutman? I thought Adam Troutman went to... I thought he went, returned back to Denver. That's another uh, Sean Payton special. Did he really go to the Broncos or Browns? I have him as a Bronco. I don't know why they list him with the Browns. So I think... Yeah, because they say re-sign. Okay, no, Troutman's with the Broncos. Thought so. Look at that, look at that. NFL.com, I'm catching your typos. Uh, But they bring in Jordan Hicks. That's a really solid replacement after losing Anthony Walker. I think people, like, low-key, because I know Anthony Walker's been hurt here and there the last couple of years, but how good he is. Like, Walker was a really solid for that defense. Bring in Jordan Hicks, who's a very solid veteran at this stage. Good pickup. Good pickup. Uh, the Jerry Judy trade, kind of the creme de la creme 
Uh, being able to get him for cheap essentially might just be a one-year rental, though. I don't know if the Browns will really shell out money for him after this, but they're probably the team that, uh, with the little cap, made the best moves. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, Cincinnati Bengals. Oh, yeah, I forgot about Elliott to the Steelers. Good call, Joey. I, I really thought Deshaun Elliott might go might go to the uh, Eagles. But, uh, no, yeah, that Elliott pickup is pretty solid. I mean, he's a reliable vet at this point, so. I mean, it, it, it doesn't doesn't really change where I'm putting the Steelers. It literally doesn't change where I'm putting the Steelers. Oh, they got a safety now? Oh, all the way up to the top. Nah, it doesn't change. I'm putting them here. Putting them here. All right. So the Bengals, you got, uh, they, they bring in Zach Moss, essentially a replacement for Joe Mixon. That's solid. You get a younger version of Joe Mixon, essentially. Kind of is what it is. T. Higgins, they franchise tag him. Sounds like. T. Higgins wants the hell out of there. We'll find out if a move happens. We'll see. We shall see. They signed Mike Gesicki. Fun, funny enough, I think he might be more of a Tyler Boyd replacement than he would be a Irv Smith uh, Jr. replacement. Uh, I, I, I honestly think that uh, Gesicki is going to be used. because I mean, that's Gesicki. The dude gets used in the slot a lot. He's like Tyler Conklin at this point. They were able to keep Drew Sample, best uh, blocking tight end. He's been really good for them. Uh, the Sheldon Rankins pickup was, hey, we're not going to be able to bring back DJ Reader. So let's get Rankins. Rankins is good when on the field, but he is another guy with those injury, uh, an injury history. But solid pickup. It's, it's a downgrade from DJ Reader. Don't mistake it, but it's a solid pickup. I'm kind of curious. Like Von Bell is not a starter on this team. Geno Stone will be. At least they're paying him like it. So what the heck's going on at, in the in this safety room for the Bengals? What the hell's going on in the safety room? Like Dax Hill? Are you going to move him to the slot full time? There ain't no way they're going to have Von Bell start over Jordan Battle. Jordan Battle was good late last year. There ain't no way. Von Bell is the depth guy there. Like Geno Stone, you're paying him like a starter, so are you moving Daxon Hill to the slot? Because you got Mike Hilton there. Are you going to try to move Mike Hilton? Can you trade slot corners like that? Do they have value like that in the trade market? I don't know. I don't know, man. I mean, you could play three safety sets, but... When one of those, usually one of those safeties is playing up in the slot, and that's Mike Hilton all day. Unless you're like trading out a linebacker for a third safety, it's kind of like, eh, you know what I'm saying? I feel like, yeah, Daxon Hill's playing a lot in the slot. I really feel, <laughs> I'm choking up my words. Oh, man, maybe I'm not allowed to talk crap about the Bengals. Um, I'm going to be honest. I don't love this free agency for him. I don't. They kind of just re-signed some of their guys, but they made some moves, but like, they're not bad moves. Like Rankins and Stone are good pickups. I just don't see the path, you know? I don't see the path. Now, it, I'm not like offended by anything they did to where I would put them like here. I'm not offended. Yeah, but I honestly don't even think they're good enough to be in this category. And they don't, it's not like li they have little cap. Like, I'm going to just stick them there, but like, I'm just not wowed. I'm just not. Who's going to catch the ball for the Chargers last year or for next year? Josh Palmer, Quinn Johnston, and whoever they pick at five. All right, all right, all right. Where are we going? Where are we going? We're going to Baltimore. Baltimore. Another team that didn't have a lot of funds, but did what they could. 
Derrick Henry was a given. We, everyone and their mom knew the minute Derrick Henry was leaving Tennessee that he was booking a flight to Baltimore. That was one of the most gimme predictions anyone could have had. I know. I made it. Bring back Nelson Aguilar is pretty nice. Uh, honestly, uh, they, they weren't working with a lot of cap, so they knew they wanted to get Justin Matabuke. They knew they wanted to keep him. Able to get a deal done. That's great. Phenomenal. You can check that off their list. They bring in Derrick Henry. Great. They're probably calling it a day at this point. Now, tackle's still a little worrisome with the Morgan Moses trade. But in such a tackle-rich class, maybe you feel good about someone falling at 30. Or you just kind of maybe trade up to get one of those. Because th there's a lot of good tackles that will be going in the first round. A lot. So I'm going to go with little cap good moves. I think that's just kind of about right. And uh, hmm. I don't know if the Seahawks did enough. I don't know. I mean, it, it, I, I'm going to put them there. I'm going to put them there. Little cap good moves. Little cap good moves. All right, we only got the AFC East. So let me see what's up in the chat. Uh, who you got for the Raiders on the draft? I think, depending on how they feel about Theron Mumford, do they think he's a guard or a tackle? They could go with the tackle in this class just because the value's there. They go with one of the top corners on the board. I think that would make a ton of sense as well. Uh, I, I still think defensive interior is still on the board for him because, well, they released Jerry Tillery. I don't believe, I don't believe they brought back uh, Adam Butler. Uh, let's see. Okay. So, okay. So it's a guy like Matthew Butler, Byron Young, some of these young guys that they drafted the last three or four, uh, two or three years. Uh, hey, that's the Jada uh, Savera. I liked him coming out of. Miami. It was his last stop Arizona State. I can't remember. It's been so long now. So honestly, I think interior still on still could be in play here. So those are a couple of spots that they can go. All right. So we got the New York Jets. Team that didn't have a lot of cap space, but honestly, have made really good moves. John Simpson, not a bad move. Is he the worst player on your offensive line? Your offensive line is probably in good shape. But is he the worst player on this offensive line? He's coming in to play left guard there. You got Joe uh, Tipman going to be playing center. Other guard spot, it's probably going to be Elijah Vera Tucker. which Because now you trade for Morgan Moses, which I think that was a good pickup. I really, really do. And then do you just draft a left tackle? I think you just draft a left tackle. And you just kind of hope it works out. I feel like that's a good that'd be a good call. I feel like the Jets have done a good job. You bring in Tyrod Taylor, bam, you improve the backup role. Because I mean, dude, Aaron Rodgers goes down again. You're not dead in the water with Tyrod Taylor. Uh to me, Leaky Foto, it's kind of a whatever sign in. I don't think he's really depth at best. Isaiah Oliver, depth at best. Javon Kinlaw, reunited with uh, Robert Sala. I think it's pretty solid. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put them in this uh, little move or little cap, but good moves. I think I'm probably going to have them a spot ahead of the Niners. Okay, we got the New England Patriots. Straight up, Patriots just re-signed their own guys. They have just re-signed their own guys. And you know what? It's fine. It's fine. They do bring in, like, Jacoby Brissett, Antonio Gibson. It's fine. Brissett kind of ensures that you could bring in a quarterback and use Brissett as a bridge option. That's great. Gibson, I think, is a good, uh, he's a good complimentary back if they want to. Please, please. Feed Ramondre and Ramondre stay healthy. 
But ultimately, this team was just bringing guys back. Kendrick Bourne, they bring back. I think that was solid. He was their best receiver until he got hurt. Hunter Renfro. Uh, they do sign Austin Hooper. That's interesting. Uh, they bring a core of four, which, no, you're still in trouble at tackle. But they re-sign guys like Jennings, Uchi, uh, Awainu. Uh, to be honest, like Brissett's probably their best pickup in free agency with the next guy being Taki Taki. <laughs> So we're just going to put them in, re-sign in their own guys. Oh, fins up, baby. Fins up, dude. What's good, Swifty? How you doing? Freaking Miami Dolphins. Finally, finally did something that I loved. Today was a very good day. So let's talk about some, uh, some of their early moves. Bringing in Joe New Smith, I think that's solid. Dude's someone, he's a mismatched nightmare. And he could create after the catch. Kind of perfect for this scheme. They sign Aaron Brewer. I don't love it. He's a bad pass protector. He gets mollywhopped. But he's really good. He'll be a really good run blocker for the system. Being wide zone and whatnot. So, I get it. I, it's fine. I knew he was coming. Pause. I knew he was coming to Miami. There we go. Uh, I had a, I had this as his landing spot in my in my video. I may not love Aaron Brewer, but I think he's a good fit. Hopefully, he could do well enough in pass protection. Uh, a couple of other guys that they brought on that same day was I love the Anthony Walker pickup. As long as this guy stays healthy, he's a really good player. I feel like giving Jordan Brooks three years, thirty million, a bit much. I really just think he's a good run stuffer, a guy that. Uh, is like more of an old school thumper that can get real physical. I think his coverage prowess is kind of meh, kind of is what it is, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And then, holy macaroni. Though so they go get Shaq Barrett, which I like that. I like that on a one year deal. Jalen Phillips sounds like he'll probably be ready by the time the season opens. Bradley Chubb. Don't know when he'll be back. Will it be like week eight, week 10? Don't know yet. Don't have the timeline. So Barrett come, could step in. Uh, he might be in the twilight of his career, but he's still a capable enough pass rusher. Uh, Jordan Poyer, again, might be in the twilight of his career, but a very, very capable player next to Javon Holland. I like it. Kendall Fuller. This was the move that really got me going. I love it. Cam Smith, sorry, it ain't your time yet. May never be your time, but it certainly ain't your time yet. I freaking loved that pickup. I thought he was the best corner remaining on the market. There was no way we could afford a guy like Legereus Sneed. It's a big reason we were unable to keep guys like Robert Hunt, Christian Wilkins. Fuller's a really good pickup opposite of Jalen Ramsey. I love that move. Am I saying the Dolphins spent well? No. No, I'm not. But I think overall they made some good moves. Like for a team that I would have probably had little cap good moves. Honestly, they spent well. They spent really well. I think I am. I think I'm going to put them right here. Just ahead of the Packers. Also, I mean, we did pick up uh, Neville Gallimore. He's fine. He's depth is what it is. I'm glad we re-signed Robert Jones. Honestly, I kind of like Robert Jones. I don't mind if he's one of our starters at guard. The question is, who the hell is our other starter? <laughs> Last but not least, Buffalo Bills. Ultimately, Bills were just re-signing their guys. They were, watching guy they were watching guys leave. They had to release some guys. Because they were in a very dire cap situation. They had to have Josh Allen restructure his contract. So they extend Deion Dawkins. They bring back Epinesa, Edwards, Jones. Uh, you got Taylor. They brought back Taylor Rapp. And then initially their best free agent move was Mitch Trubisky because it was their only free agent they brought in. Then they go out and get Mac Hollins. And then they pay Curtis Samuel three years, $30 million? It's kind of weird. 
Khalil Shakir is kind of their prime slot guy. You're not what are you gonna play like Khalil Shakir on the outside? I don't think so. Shoot, let's go take a let's go take a take a quick look at the split. Because I don't think Khalil Shakir is an outside receiver. He spent 76.8% of the time in the slot. Let's go, let's go to Curtis Samuel playing over there in Washington. Dude's largely a slot receiver. Curtis Samuel, 70.2% of the time he's in the slot. I mean, and then you got to expect you're going to have Dalton Kincaid line up in the slot too. What the hell are we doing? I, and I don't know, people, like initially I want to put the bills in re-signing their guys, but like Mitch Trubisky, like I don't mind, I like Matt Collins. I think Matt Collins is a fine, like depth guy. Curtis Samuel, three years, 30 million. What the hell are we doing? Nicholas Morrow, honestly, was so, like solid enough for the Eagles. Not saying much. That back seven wasn't that good last year. But I don't know, man. I, do I poor use of funds? Maybe back end of re signed their guys, but like I'm going to put them at the. I'm going to put them right here, dude. I'm going to put poor use of funds. Like, I get they move their receivers a lot, but that's a lot to pay a receiver who's going to be... I, I don't like it. For me, that move says you're not drafting a receiver at the back end of the first round. You'd be like, well, that's fine. They don't have to. But this is a deep wide receiver class. Why wouldn't you want to draft a receiver in the first three rounds? Like, if you were looking for more help for Josh Allen, you probably could have just went to the draft. Cheaper alternative. And, like, legit, okay, what has Curtis, Curtis Samuel done? What, what are you doing with Washington? Army says a hot lot of nothing. He's had back-to-back 600-yard -back years. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it, but... This is the list. I feel like it's fair. I feel like some, uh, a lot has changed since our opening day of free agency. I think that's all right. I think that's okay. You could say look at Curtis Samuels. You could say look at Curtis Samuels' QBs, though. The dude's, what, never had a 1,000-yard season? You're not going to talk me in to him being worth $10 million a year for the Bills. Maybe another team, but not for the Bills. You're not going to get me there. Oh, Kirito, you're an absolute mark. You're an absolute mark. All right, let's do a real quick refresh, see if there's any new free agents or free agent news. If you haven't already, we're only four likes away from 100. I would love to get there, so help help get us there. Help get us there. All right. Let's see. Free agency, free agency, free agency. Let's talk about the, this was four or five minutes ago. Ooh, LeJerry Sneed. Burr, burr, burr. Strong winds in the direction of Sneed returning to Kansas City to play on his tag. couple of teams, Colts, Dolphins, Lions, were aggressive in pursuit of Sneed, but either went in other directions or are hesitant to give up draft picks. Uh, expensive player coming from a team who wants an expensive return. Tough situation. We'll see what happens. Well, that's the current news on that. All right. Let's do one more little check for free agency. Let's go with the latest. Yeah, I'm not seeing any, any, any recent ones yet. But, hey, thanks for hanging out with me tonight. Uh, might be streaming a Walk the Mock tomorrow. I don't know yet. 
we'll see. We'll see how uh how tomorrow goes for me work wise. But thanks for hanging out with me. Before you leave, go ahead, hit that thumbs up. Also, if you want to support the channel, then check out Aurora. It's right now a free 14 day trial. Broshmo, look up Michael McLean. Michael McLean. The guy that does free agency news. I'll take a quick gander. Uh, this isn't who I, this isn't, why am I, why am I looking at this? All right. Uh, still quit, quit spamming. Just wait, look at like in the chat. Ah, you know what? It's late. It's late. I'll catch y'all tomorrow. Y'all be easy. I'll see y'all on the next one later.